Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson, we will start a series of lessons about magnetism. So let's look at general facts regarding magnetism. So what is magnetism? It's a phenomena caused by magnets. What are magnets? Well, those are objects that produce what we call a magnetic field. Now this magnetic field, it's invisible, we don't see it, but it's kind of a force that attracts or pulls on other materials. And it can also attract or repel other magnets. So if you have two magnets that are nearby each other, they may attract or they may repel depending on how they are oriented. But if you're dealing with one magnet and another substance that is not a magnet, it's possible that it will be attracted, but it will never be repelled. And we'll talk about what kind of substances um, these are and what they're called in a moment. So magnetism in metals, so we know it's metallic substances that can be attracted or that can be magnetized. Um, why is it created? Well, it's created because there's electrons inside the atoms. And these electrons are not distributed evenly. And because they're not distributed evenly, well, it causes uh, a kind of polarization. We talked about polarization in the past. So it creates what we call poles. So you have an example here of a piece of metal. Each little section is called a domain. So within each domain, you have charges, right? You have atoms, so you have protons, and you have electrons. And these electrons are not distributed evenly. So let's say they're all closer to this side. So that means this end of the domain will be negative and this end of the domain will be more positive. So it creates what we call a dipole, die for two, two poles, a negative pole and a positive pole. Now, if these domains are all misaligned, so they're pointing in different directions or the electrons are not distributed in the same pattern, um, then you're going to have a non-magnetic substance because they're all cancelling out, right? Their effects are all cancelling out. If it so happens that these domains are all aligned the same way, so all the electrons are bunched on the same end of the various domains, then you're going to have magnetization. So you're going to have either a permanent magnet or you're going to have a substance that can be temporarily magnetized. So this is how magnets, magnets work. Now, if you have a permanent magnet, it says it, it's permanent. So there's always uh, a side that we will call the North Pole and a side that we will call the South Pole. Now, an example of that would be a magnet that you put on the fridge. Okay, so those are always magnetized. Now, we can see the field. I mean, I said that it's invisible, but there is a way to reveal it. And that's by using iron filings. So this is kind of, uh, it's iron powder in other words. So if we sprinkle iron powder or iron filings around a magnet, we can see the actual lines of field. We can see they're curving around the north and the south and all around like this. So we can actually reveal this field. So it is very real, it's just invisible. So that force is invisible, but it is there. Now, if we put two north poles, one closer to the other, close to the other, there uh, will be a zone that is empty. And that is why, that is because two norths will repel. Okay, so the lines of the field will curve around each magnet, but they will not touch. There's gonna be like a dead zone in between. And that's why there's repulsion between them. The same thing would happen with two south poles. If we put a north and a south close by, well, we will have some iron filings that basically fill out the space. And that's because the field will get completed between the north and the south. They are attracted to each other. So there are lines of field actually that will go from one to the other and lines of field that will also curve around the actual magnet a little bit like you have over here. So each magnet will have its own field but there's also gonna be lines of field between the two magnets and that creates the attraction. Now, if you take a magnet, a permanent magnet, and you break it into sections, so originally here I had a north, here I had a south, if I break it into sections, I end up with smaller permanent magnets. So this side will become a south, this side will become a north, this side a south, and so on and so forth, until I get to the other end where there's a south. 
So because opposites attract, well, when we break the magnet, that's how the dipoles get formed. So south, north, south, north, and so on and so forth. Okay, so naturally that's what happens. Now I was telling you that some substances are attracted by magnets, but they're not magnets themselves. Why are they attracted? Because they contain certain specific metals. Example, iron, cobalt, and nickel. So those are um, elements that are ferromagnetic. These elements can get attracted by a magnet. When they get attracted by a magnet, they act a little bit like a magnet themselves, but it's not permanent. It's temporary. But when we remove the magnet, sometimes those substances, those ferromagnetic substance, substances, remain magnetic for a while. And that's what we call remanence or retentivity. Right? Remanence or retentivity. They're synonyms. And what that means is that that ferromagnetic substance remains magnetized for a while or retains that magnetic field for a while. If you want to try an experiment at home, you could take a magnet, it has to be a strong enough magnet, and you can start attracting one paper clip and then try to pick up a second one and a third one. If you're lucky, if your magnet is strong enough, you might be able to get a fourth one. So once you have your chain of paper clips like this, grab this paper clip over here and slowly remove the chain from the magnet. You will see that these paper clips stay stuck together. As long as you don't disrupt the whole chain, that you don't make a, a strong movement or you don't try to separate them physically, they will remain uh, attracted to each other. And they're not actually clipped together. They're just holding together because of the, uh, the magnetic field that the chain retained. If you then separate your paper clips and try to just attract one with the other again, the paper clips won't attract each other anymore. You've broken that field. So there's no more retentivity of the field. So remanence or retentivity is the ability to retain the magnetic field, but only for a while in ferromagnetic substances. And it's only for a while because these substances are not permanent magnets. They're substances that can be subjected to a field. They can create uh, or mimic a magnetic field because of the presence of a magnet. But if you remove the magnet, then that force eventually will go away. Then we have non-magnetic substances. So there are substances that are never attracted to a magnet, uh, such as plastic, for example, or wood, and uh, those just cannot be attracted. They don't have any of that iron or cobalt or nickel in them, so therefore they will not be affected by a magnetic field. Now, by convention, how do we represent a magnetic field? We use lines, such as what we saw in the previous image with the iron filings. So it was determined that the magnetic field will always flow from the north end of a magnet to the south end of a magnet. Okay, so if I draw a field around one magnet, I will go north to south and around the other way, north to south. And if I have two magnets nearby each other, the field will go from north to south. If I had another magnet here, it would go from north to south. Or maybe there are some lines that go around like this, north to south. Okay, so the arrows are always going from north to south. And the lines never touch. Okay, and the closer they are together, the stronger the field. So it's similar as to what you learn for electric charges, for protons and electrons, when we were showing um, the lines of the, the electric field, well, it was working the same way. The number of lines would determine how strong the field is, and the lines never cross. Now, when we look at the Earth, the Earth has a magnetic field. Now, this is a little bit special because there is what we call a geographic pole, but also a magnetic pole. So when we look at the Earth, we know that the Earth has a North Pole, where Santa lives, and we have a South Pole. But these are geographic poles, right? So geographic North and geographic South. Now, it just so happens that the actual magnetic poles of the Earth 
are the opposite way. Yes, as usual, we don't always get it right the first time around. And since a lot of people are used to certain conventions, sometimes we just keep them the way they are. But in a sense, it works. I'll show you why. So we know that this is a magnetic south, this is a magnetic north. And we said that by convention, the lines go from north to south. So if I draw my field, my lines of field, and I go through my compasses here, and I'll show you why I'm doing that. So it goes from north, north as in magnetic north, to magnetic south, okay? And I would have lines, oops, I crossed my arrows, I'm not supposed to do that. So I have north to towards south, and I'm talking always magnetic, okay? So <clears throat> if I put, sorry, if I put compasses on the lines of a field, whether it's a small field or a, a big field like the one from the Earth, my compasses will always align with the field. So you can see my compasses are following the lines of field. The dark part points to the geographic north. But if I just cut out a section, so if I cut my section from here to here, we said a magnetic field goes from north to south, right? So I can actually create smaller sections. Well, the southern part of my compass will be attracted to the north of my field, and the north part of my compass will be attracted to the south of my field. Opposites attract. And so because it does this, it just so happens that the north of my compass is actually pointing to the geographic north. So this is a beauty. My compass aligns itself with the field, right? The field goes from north to south. The opposites will attract. But because of that, the north of the dial is attracted to a magnetic south, which happens to be the north geographic pole. So it all works. So if you're using a compass, whether it's a digital one or one like this, old style that is, um, you know, mechanical, well, it always points to the north, geographic north. But why? Because it, in fact, it's attracted to the magnetic south of the pole. Okay, so that's an interesting fact about the Earth and its magnetic field. And that's all I had to tell you for the general knowledge about magnetism. Uh, in the next lesson, we will talk about the magnetic field that gets created when electricity flows through a wire. So stay tuned for that lesson. If you have questions, please don't be shy and ask. And until then, take care.